Thank you so much to First Leaf for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. So listen up, bestie. You're at a crowded supermarket, cruising the wine aisle, feeling a little lost, maybe intimidated, or just tired of always buying the same thing. You want to explore. You want to spice up your life, but you don't know where to begin. Bestie, I have the answer for you. You need First Leaf. Here's why. As America's most personalized wine company, First Leaf takes the guesswork out of wine selection. It's easy. You just take their short taste quiz and rate the first few wines they send you. Then First Leaf will use your responses to curate and customize selection of delicious award-winning wines based on your personal preferences with 96% accuracy. It's also such a great way to drink high quality wine for an affordable price and it's so easy. Sign up today and you'll get your first six bottles, yes, six bottles, for $39.95, plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash TK. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash TK to get your first six bottles for $39.95, plus free shipping. Tryfirstleaf.com slash TK. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with one of my favorite creators. <laughs> she feels like a little sis at this point, Miss Fernanda. So cute. <laughs> you, honestly, you too, a big sister. I feel like you <laughs> give you. a lot of good advice. I'm like, I trust TK. Aww. I can text you and yeah. I love sweet. it. I love it. Well, we met, how long ago did we meet? Now, honestly, it was in October. And that, okay. that's like kind of a long time. It feels like it wasn't. It feels like that I've long. known you forever, but I know, maybe because I've just been a fan. Um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Fernanda, you're in LA. I'm in LA. You're from Vancouver. Yeah. A two hour flight, actually. I, I feel like I say this to everyone because they think it's such a far commute that they're yeah. like, you're from Canada. I'm like, guys, it's actually only two hours. If you <laughs> guys ever want to come to me, like, I would also love that. But that's actually quicker yeah. than like me going to Indiana. It, how, how far is that? It's like four hour flight. Yeah. No, it's, it's two hours. You can come in the morning, do your thing, and then leave. So Maybe I have to do a Vancouver trip. You should. Honestly, I just saw some people go to Whistler for like a Yeah, the trip. benefit trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually was in New York. But oh, okay, okay. Whistler's very beautiful if anyone has ever been. Yeah, I grew up, so my mom's Canadian. Okay, okay. So I grew up uh, skiing in Whistler. Yeah. Oh, so she, you've been. It's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's very it's cute. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, it is. Anyway, Fernanda, I'm so glad you're here. You're in LA. Mm-hmm. I feel like you have a definitely like a little LA girl in you mm, for honestly, sure they say Vancouver is the LA of Canada okay <laughs> that sounds really fun to say but same kind of vibe I feel like everyone's very like health focused yes wellness yeah hiking yeah I things. mean I don't really I don't really take part in that part but it is that but okay yeah. I love it so how did you get into YouTube because to me you're like a new creator still mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you've absolutely crushed the platform like you've Thank made you. it your bitch <laughs> you Honestly, have. I mean, I, th- mm, my heart. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't even know what to say to that. But I mean, you, you are cr- absolutely crushing on YouTube. Thank you. I want to hear everything. Tell me a little bit about how you got your start. Got and started. So I always wanted to have a YouTube channel. I was always saying I would like literally in my room make like what's in my shower or like ma- doing my makeup routine, but there's That's no normal. camera watching. And I would do this when I would get ready, just like talk to myself, be like, so next up, we're going to be doing this, which I feel like a lot of people did when they were younger. Yeah. But I grew up on even like, Alicia Marie, Makeup by Mandy 24, like the, all the girls, I I was obsessed. Yeah. And so when I was in grade 10, I used to do gymnastics mm-hmm. competitively. That was like my love. I was obsessed with it. And I used to watch Monica Church on YouTube and she had a gymnastics channel. So one day I saw her at a competition in Santa Clara and I went up to her. I had to tell her like, I'm a big fan of you. Like, I love your stuff. And she actually followed me on Instagram and was like, messaging me after saying that she wanted to come to Vancouver and shoot for my gym and I was beyond ecstatic that like a YouTuber that I had been watching for so long wanted to come and shoot with us so she well, ended that's up so cool yeah like, like what are the odds literally what are the odds it kind of felt like fate at the time I was yeah. like this is my Stars time are to shine. Yeah. yeah and so she came she was shooting for us and now looking back those videos never made the light of day and I'm kind of glad because it was so cringy but it was cute it was cute Oh my gosh, so cute. And Monica is so talented. Yeah, no, she is. Honestly, I really look up to her and she has such great like videography skills and she's very good at like storytelling. Great storyteller. She is someone that I would take a lot of inspiration from. And so the channel never ended up 
I guess, following through, but she left her camera with us. And so I would bring this camera to like my grad events or like parties that I would go to. Adorable. And yeah, everyone was just kind of like, Fernanda's bringing the camera. It's just not even like news. And I would always have my friends in it. And then finally, when I filmed my graduation for like high school, I decided to just go at it. Why don't I just edit it and post it? And I fell in love with the process. I mean, I have a lot of notes in my phone of me being like, I edited my first video and I just like, I love this. I hope this is something I continue because I'm obsessed. Yeah, like I felt on top of the moon. So after that, I would post like maybe once a month kind of. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID hit it, like I was like, this is my time. So wow. really took advantage of that. Okay, so how old were you when COVID hit? I was 18. So that's when you started taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Let's put a pin in that because mm-hmm. I have to interject a little because mm-hmm. I was just at a wedding in South okay. Africa with Monica Church. Oh, my God. And we talked about you. <gasps> <laughs> oh I haven't talked to her since I was probably in grade like 10 I or 11. I literally <laughs> was like, Monica, you and Fernanda have to get together. Yeah. And she was like, she's such a good content creator. She was basically gassing you up, saying all the amazing things that you're saying about her. Mm-hmm. And we, I was obviously, because I'm such a huge fan, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you have to meet each other. Yeah. So next yeah. time, maybe... Which is so funny you were just in Palm Springs because I yeah. think she was too. I think she does do stuff there. She has like an Airbnb. Yeah, she has an like Airbnb. Something. And yeah. she was like, TK, you should come. But I was in Vegas. But uh, anyway... Oh, yeah. this is also funny because you guys have to meet yeah, and yeah. well again uh, yeah, and rekindle. rekindle your love. <laughs> Honestly, me at the age of like 16 in a gymnastics, like, yeah. oh my God. I, 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 If you think like sometimes people will see me online, they're like, oh, she's just kind of like making jokes. Like at that time, I think I had no like consciousness yes. formed yet. Like I was just saying whatever. Like it was honestly really funny. Well, but <laughs> it, No, it's adorable. But what I told her, which correct me if I'm wrong, but I was like, Monica, like you definitely were like a huge part of like Mm -hmm. this girl's fire to like basically become obviously you did all the work yourself Mm -hmm. to like get Mm -hmm. to where you Mm -hmm. are but i was like you don't understand like you like accidentally leaving your camera there that is like the reason homegirl is who she is like essentially yeah no i totally i would give i feel like i always mention her when i talk about my youtube channel because if it wasn't for her i wouldn't have had the camera in the first place and yeah, it was always a dream of mine, but even investing in a camera at first when you don't have any, like, yeah, it's like a thousand dollars. Me at 15, I'm like, I'm not buying yeah. this camera. <laughs> you like, have a G to spend. No, like, yeah. that's not happening. But then I had that camera. It was just like, it felt like fate, Which honestly. is so, I, what I was trying to tell her is I was, I was like, I know in your eyes, mm-hmm. you just accidentally left that yeah. there. And you were like, ah, oh, you can keep it. It's more of a hassle for mm-hmm. me to get it back. But like... Things that we do mm-hmm. to others like don't seem like a big deal, but exactly. it really is. It exactly, yeah. And it can change someone's life. And so, it's crazy yeah. how even like everyone that you meet has like something to do in your life. And like yes. things just happen for a reason. And I always think back, I'm like, what are the odds that like I was in gymnastics, that I went to a competition, that I met my like favorite yes. YouTuber that decided to do a channel for me, that left her camera like everything just happened for a reason that I'm like, whenever I think back, I'm just so grateful for uh-huh. everything because it just feels so meant to be. And look what you did with I know, what. I mean, so, you really you really popped off. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But you definitely have to. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but you have a podcast. I, or you're yeah. coming out. Yeah. So you I, have to have Monica on. I, oh, 100%. You should. I, I would That'd love to. That'd be a great to. podcast episode. It would. It would. That would um, be great. But she is the best. I also love. Have you met Shelby, her twin sister? I haven't met Shelby. Okay. But I, I grew up watching her They're as well. They're both. So fabulous storytellers Mm -hmm. and awesome and it was so funny because i remember talking to her yeah on this trip that i just got back from and i was like you have to meet fernanda i know we need to hang out we need to do something or hang yeah because you've met before either one even like going yeah doing something Mm -hmm. fun for sure anyway going back to our pin Mm -hmm. you turned 18 and you were like Mm -hmm. covid setting yeah i was in college first of all okay (laughs) Yeah, I forgot to mention that part. I was in college because I wanted to be an orthodontist, which is like literally <laughs> okay. the opposite of whatever I'm doing now. Great job. Um, yeah, great, great job. Great career choice. Yeah, it's funny because I I think like people that are actually orthodontists are going to be like, girl, why were you even trying to do that? Not that I don't think it could have happened, but the reason why I wanted to do it was because I was like, oh my God, it's so cute. Like paying attention to detail, doing little braces. Like I think doing I actually- little braces. Like I think I actually just like the aesthetic of it more than the actual thing. And then once I started, I was like, oh wow, like physics chem, like this is, this is going to take effort. And yeah, I loved it. Dental but school. College, like it just, I don't know. I, it definitely felt like I was in the wrong environment but I think it needed to happen so I could see what I wanted to do and like 
you know, after that, I was like, maybe I should do marketing or like something else that's more in my field. Mm -hmm. But everything switched to online. And so I was trying to do both at the same time, making videos, being online. And that summer happened. And even in the fall, I went back to school. But I was so invested in my YouTube channel. I'm like, I just know this is going to work. I was hitting like 50K the next month, 100K the next month, 150K. And I, I, my parents were like so happy so just like proud of me so I told them like awesome yeah I was like I think I might take some time off and then continue to be consistent and it really honestly benefited me so I'm very glad okay I have so many questions so you you started taking it seriously what did that mean Mm -hmm. in your head like when you had probably a thousand subscribers Mm -hmm. like but you knew it was going to happen like Mm -hmm. what was your take us back to your brain like what was going Mm -hmm. through your mind um Honestly, I feel like I had a lot of confidence in, like, it's kind of weird because, I mean, obviously I didn't know what was going to happen, but when I would post a video and it would, like, do well, I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I I put a lot of effort into this. I think it's good. It's getting, like, the recognition Uh it deserves. And honestly, I was, like, very proud. So I would post, like, twice a week in, like, when COVID first happened. And anytime I had free time, if I was getting ready, I would watch videos on like how to be successful on YouTube, how to do your thumbnails, how to be more engaging, how like that's all I would watch. Interesting. Yeah. So is there any uh, creator you would recommend for someone to watch? Honestly, I don't remember the names, but I would just highly recommend looking at all those types of videos because if you watch a lot of them, you end up seeing like a lot of the same advice or like you just kind of get a gist of it. But I think for me growing up watching YouTube for so many years and then seeing kind of like the business side of it or the back end of it, I kind of knew what I was getting into before even doing it. Like I already knew kind of like what the playing field was, I guess. Um, But yeah, I would post like every two weeks. I was being really consistent and like constantly just seeing like what are other people posting, who like who I would want to be, what are they doing? Okay. And so I was proud of like every accomplishment that I had made and I was I was really... I still am, but, like, into manifesting. Like, mm-hmm. I was scripting. I don't know if you know what that is. Is that where you're, like, writing out yeah. what you... Like, writing out kind of as if it already happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've done that. Yeah. I so, do that. Yeah, I mean, I would be at, like, a 1,000 subscribers, and I was like, oh, my God, I wake up, I check my phone, the subscribers are flooding in, like, <gasps> I'm making so much money, I have brand deals, I'm, like, an influencer, like, I... The dedication was there, honestly. No, but <laughs> that you have to have that absurd mindset Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. you really do Mm -hmm. because they're so this world is now so congested like you have to have Mm -hmm. almost an unrealistic yeah oh I'm a hundred percent like such a big believer in like having delusional confidence manifestation like all of that is so real and Like, I feel like I'm a big advocate for that on my channel. And I try to be very, like, show how the process was. Because if you're, like, if you believe it, you know it's going to happen. It will happen. Mm -hmm. And then people around you start to believe it. And even at times when people that I knew in person would kind of, like, be like, oh, you have a YouTube channel. Like, uh," I honestly never felt ashamed of it. Because I, like, had such a strong belief of it in my head. So that's, I would highly recommend You're like, just watch where this is going. No, literally, (laughs) I was like, just wait. Like, I love it. So what type of videos... You know, again, going back to that, you have a thousand Mm -hmm, subscribers mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, what type of videos are you making and what's really performing well for you? Mm -hmm. My first video that hit 100K was actually, like, cheer vlog. So, I did competitive cheerleading. Oh, my gosh. Same. Yeah. You have such just, like, similar growing up background. I kind of love it. I love it. I know. But, yeah, I was on VAS um, Ice Queens and I loved that. It was so fun. And I would, like, bring my camera around and... Yeah, I, that was my first video that hit 100K. My parents baked me a little cake with 100K. Shut it up. was so cute. Oh, I love how supportive they are. Th- no, they love it. That makes all the difference. It's mm-hmm, amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was posting a lot of videos with like self care. I think when quarantine hit, my first video that did really well was like a 24 hour glow up challenge. Mm-hmm. And again, my parents being like so supportive, they would be like, oh, you're filming a video. Let's clean everything. Let's make this. Let's Stop. help you. Like they would help me make like chocolate covered strawberries for my video to be even better. Like they were honestly a big part of wait like, this is adorable yeah they were so helpful oh my so gosh my I remember like I did that video like the thumbnails like me in a bathtub and it's like my parents bathroom and they would be like setting it all up bringing me candles like is the lighting good will you like they would help me out so much so wait, that, that is amazing yeah they were so sweet honestly I really do miss living at home I moved out in like yeah. last year in May and my parents like my dad worked from home and he had his office and he like gave it up for me to make so that was another video that did really well it was making my office at home and it was literally Stop. my parents oh, I've seen office that. yeah get out. so yeah that was that but i doing i'm sorry i keep like steering the question but no i yeah. love it that's adorable i i 
I don't know that I've ever met a YouTuber mm -hmm. whose parents helped them that much in that yeah. regard. That's no, crazy. They were so supportive. That's and amazing. Yeah, at first I remember telling my dad, like, I want to do YouTube. He's like, okay. Like, that's kind of, yeah. you know, okay. Every dad is yeah, like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, he always tells this story to his friends, but he's just like, you know, at first it was plan C, and then it became plan B, and then it was plan A. So then everyone's, like, on board helping me out, just being yeah. so supportive. And honestly, I having a strong community around you does make all the difference. Uh -huh. So I'm very grateful for that. And I feel like anyone else that is maybe in a similar position that wants to do like YouTube or social media or whatever, I feel like focusing on who around you and people that really lift you up mm -hmm. and are there for you and like want the best for you is like, it's going to get you so far. Yeah. yeah. I, fabulous. Mm -hmm. I love that advice because there's so many times when you're not in the mood or you're mm -hmm. not motivated mm -hmm. or you're feeling discouraged yeah. or you're comparing yourself to mm -hmm. others and you need those people yeah, that those are people like ride that, or die. Yeah, exactly. We'll cheer you on but also hold you accountable and be like, yes. girl, what do you do? Like, video? Yeah, get it going. So yeah. yeah, if I don't post, my parents will be on my... Get out. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Thank you so much to First Leaf for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. So listen up, bestie. You're at a crowded supermarket, cruising the wine aisle, feeling a little lost, maybe intimidated, or just tired of always buying the same thing. You want to explore. You want to spice up your life, but you don't know where to begin. Bestie, I have the answer for you. You need First Leaf. Here's why. As America's most personalized wine company, First Leaf takes the guesswork out of wine selection. It's easy. You just take their short taste quiz and rate the first few wines they send you. Then, First Leaf will use your responses to curate and customize selection of delicious, award-winning wines based on your personal preferences with 96% accuracy. A variety of new and exciting wines will be delivered to your door with each bottle priced lower than what you'd pay at a wine store. You even get to choose when to receive your wine, and every selection is backed by First Leaf's satisfaction guarantee. As y'all know, I am always in my hosting era, and this has been such a fun treat to have anytime I have any of my friends or family over. It's so fun to surprise my friends with all the wines I have received from First Leaf because it really looks like I have my stuff together. And I love getting to expand my knowledge on wine in general and taste all the different flavors they offer. It's also such a great way to drink high quality wine for an affordable price. And it's so easy. Sign up today and you'll get your first six bottles. Yes, six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash TK. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T. L-E-A-F dot com slash TK to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Try firstleaf.com slash TK. The cheer vlog. Mm -hmm. And then what you started doing some self-care stuff. Mm -hmm. What really popped off for you? Um, I think it was very gradual, honestly. I mean, like, not gradual. Like, they were all doing well, but... I think it was just like accumulation of all mm -hmm. of them. Like even though my growth happened very quickly, it was like 5K and then 10K and then yeah. 15K. Like it, I feel like there wasn't necessarily one that really skyrocketed me until even, okay, my most viewed video, it has like 5 million views. It's trying to do the diet and the workout of Victoria's Secret models. Uh -huh. Even that video didn't even do well at first. And then it, over like the few months, it like skyrocketed. And now it's my most viewed video. So I feel like, Having that in mind, even when I post videos now, I'm always like, it's okay if it doesn't get like this many views like so quickly because it can happen over time. That's the joy of yeah, YouTube. It's exactly. like the sh there is a shelf life there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think. So yeah, that I guess that one now maybe is what I would be most known for. But at the time, everything was like very gradual. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And were you very calculated as far as like, okay, that didn't perform well, so let's go back to this. Mm -hmm. Like, were you very, I guess, aware of that? Or were mm -hmm. you just doing whatever the heck you wanted to film? Not really. Honestly, like I said, I would watch all these videos on, like, how to perform well. So I was very aware of, like, being very engaging, doing a good, like, SEO, like, good titles, mm -hmm. catchy titles. I would always, which is a little tip, but I would, like, search up on YouTube, say, the video that I was going to do before I filmed it, and then, ha like, changing the search to, like, the most viewed in the past six months or something, then I would like look at through all the titles, oh, all the wow. thumbnails, like what everyone's doing. No copying because yeah. that's not the goal, but just seeing like what everyone else is doing that I want to be like. So like, yeah. you know, I feel like you can 
place yourself in like kind of like not the competition feel i don't know how to no, like no. say this I think but like great because you you're taking what someone has already done and mm-hmm. tweaking it to make yeah. it your own and make it better exactly i feel like now the blueprint is out for everybody honestly you've seen so many people so you can really take like advice and learn from other people but that is something i would do or like going on i think i learned this honestly from probably shelby or monica but going on like a private browser oh, yeah. and then searching up the title and then seeing like what's popping up up. first that's not curated to me so it's like what's going out Mm -hmm. to everybody but stuff like that I feel like would be kind of calculated and then I would post videos and then whatever would do well I do more try to focus like videos that are for like the general public and then videos that are very curated to my community like in between yeah so So. were you strategic with like every other you would kind of do one for the general public Mm -hmm. and then one Mm-hmm. Interesting. I definitely focused on making a lot more videos for like the public and very like a lot of different niches at first. And then once I built more of a community, then I would start doing vlogs. Mm-hmm. But I do think that even now I feel like a lot of people focus on like finding your niche. But like at first you have such a like wide variety to just post yeah. whatever you want. And I think also as people, we're very like we have a lot of interest and stuff. So it's Absolutely. like I feel like it's a little bit hard when you box yourself. So I feel like trying whatever mm-hmm. and showing all your interests also makes you more like interesting and like relatable. People can find something that they like within you. What do you feel like are like the top five videos you feel like every creator should absolutely for sure do because it's just like a mm-hmm. auto like you know it'll perform well you know it'll reach yeah. a big audience et I feel like if you're in my niche which I feel like I, like there's probably different with everyone else but in like a lifestyle mm-hmm. people are like beauty fashion um, I think right now like productive days in the life are doing really well yeah as much as people Agreed. do want to see like a very curated like even and sometimes I've done this and I've realized it doesn't really do well, but like an influencer day in the life, like whatever, sometimes it's just not relatable to other people. Mm-hmm. So I think if you are in school to like use that to your advantage and like show the behind the scenes, be very honest and authentic and just showing what you're doing in everyday life. I, I find that even the most interesting watching other people, like what they're buying, what they're going through in their yeah. real life and not just like telling me what I want to hear, but like what's actually going on with them because then I want to keep up and I want to see what's next. Mm-hmm. Um like routine videos always do well. Yeah. Little morning routine, night routine. I think self care is very like a trend right now, even on TikTok, just mm-hmm. like showing whatever. But also sustainability now. I mean, I haven't dove. D- 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 dove? <laughs> What's the word for that? <laughs> I haven't really do- dove into that. Dove yeah. Into that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. really dove into that. Right? On, and what is the word for that? Dive? Dived? Dived. <laughs> dove? What? We don't know. <laughs> dove? Uh, you haven't gotten into that. I haven't really gotten into that yet, but I think that's going to be a really big thing as, like, the years are coming I up. Agree. Even in, like, I think, like, trend forecasting, they're saying, like, in fashion with all that, like, sustainability is going to be a big thing. So mm-hmm. I feel like even something with that, if there's, like, fashion or, like, how you're integrating that, maybe, like, doing some gardening at home, even that's kind of yeah. different, but, like, those kind of things uh-huh. or, like, I don't know, wait, even, like, right now, ways to save money or, like, kind of things like that I feel like is popping off mm-hmm. more than being, like, my luxury ho- like you My know Lamborghini yeah, yeah. yeah like I think just being <laughs> relatable I, I think that's not necessarily like a video but I think that kind of trend or topic yeah is kind showing of your actual life yeah. your every day mm-hmm. things to make your life easier mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like always performs well mm-hmm. okay that's interesting and then when you're coming up with videos currently mm-hmm. are you like having a brainstorm sesh with yourself mm-hmm. writing down ideas are you like scouring the internet seeing yeah. what the trends are like what's your thought process mm-hmm. now Um, now I feel like I, I feel like I know my audience pretty well. So whenever I post something that's to do with becoming your best self, that's usually what does really well for me. And I feel like there's so many aspects of that that I'm really interested, whether that be like physical health, mental health, spiritual health, emotional health, like there's just so many avenues that that can go in. And I think people are very interested in that. And I think like that's the best case scenario. Like if everyone's just working on themselves, mm-hmm. gardening themselves, this would be a much happier place. Yes. And everybody would just be like, I don't know, vibing higher. I feel like I'm, I'm very interested in all that kind of like spiritual stuff, but just being like a high vibrational person. Yeah. So I think like all of that ties in together and even like confidence or like just being, I don't even know how to explain it. The just like having a good yourself. aura, yeah, just yeah. just being a good vibe. Um, so I feel like I take that with like all my videos now going forward and yeah, I, that, I don't even know what the original question, what, what are my videos now? Well, or how do you brainstorm your, Mm -hmm. your videos currently? Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'll be like in the shower and think of something and be like, that's good. I'll write it down. Like I have like a big list and I'll just like write stuff down when I think of them. Or like if I'm going through something in my personal life, I'll like figure out how to make that into a video or like if I'm working on my health, I'll do a video on my health. If I'm deciding that I'm really working on my skincare that time, I'll do something that's like in skincare. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I try to like make it helpful for someone. Like how can I turn this into something that someone can watch and take away from it? Got it. That's kind of. Okay. I love that. I think that's a great organic way Mm -hmm. to be a creator Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. people you are genuinely showing what's going on in your life and you're you're filming which you're you're excited and interested about. Yeah. But also you're branding it in a way that's fun to watch and you're Mm -hmm. storytelling. Yeah, exactly. I do. I really like storytelling. I feel like making a video that's like beginning, middle, end is just very satisfying. (laughs) satisfying. And also, like you said, there is so many creators now that. Yeah, you can take inspiration, but you can, like, it's oversaturated sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, I feel like making videos that are very authentic to you is, like, what's going to do the best because no one else can copy it. No Mm -hmm. one can replicate it. They're going to find it from you, and they'll be, like, interested to see what next you post. And you're very hands-on with the editing still. I do all my editing. Yeah, you do all your editing. I actually don't have any team, so I probably do need that. But, I like, I can't even give it up. A lot of, like, massive YouTubers, they don't let anyone touch their editing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. I know. I I think it would be very helpful in terms of like, you know, expanding your personal brand and like doing other stuff so Mm -hmm. it doesn't take a lot of time away from you. Because I'll be like sitting at my computer for like 15 hours. I'm like, okay, this could probably be more efficient a different way. But at the end of the day, I do love it. So I'm like, it's just so hard to give up. So yeah. Do you have a lucrative like uploading schedule? Uh, No, I don't have one because sometimes I'll like post more than once a week or sometimes if something's happening and I don't post, I don't want to like disappoint people. So usually my goal would be like every like four days or like I would post like six times a month or like sometimes it'd be seven or sometimes it'd be once a week. So I definitely think that consistency is key and probably having a schedule would, you know, is very helpful. But at the same time, the more videos you produce, the more people are going to see it. So if you can do more than once a week, I feel like that's also fine. Yeah. I. You sense. know what? I don't, as a viewer, I don't rely on creative, like I don't mm, know creative neither, schedule. I just, when I get on, I'm watching you. I'm watching my favorite mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it I makes never... zero difference to me. But some people are very like, no, you need to have a schedule. So mm-hmm. I think that's interesting that you mm-hmm. have like a different take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think you need one, to be honest. As long as you're posting consistently agree, and you're posting videos that people won't like, like yeah. I think it's better. And also, I think quality over quantity. Still post, like, at minimum once a I week, agree. but quality over quantity. Because I also, like, back. if you if you post a video that's kind of bad, I think the algorithm kind of gets crazy. Like, once you start posting videos that, um, like, people aren't really enjoying. So I think it's more important to make sure that you get a video that you're proud of. And also, like, I don't really like watching back on my videos if I didn't like the way I edited. I'm like, I just want to erase that from my mind. That's it's not the best feeling uploading it. So I think uploading things that you're really proud of that you would even watch back yourself. Like, I have a lot of videos that I like. They're my own videos and I'll watch them back because I'm like, oh, good time in my life. Like, I just like watching (laughs) which is great. That's a great sign because normally I'm like, I get the ick, which Mm -hmm. is not Mm -hmm. a good sign. Well, that's the thing. I'll get also normal, though. Yeah, no, it is very. I feel like. Yeah, sometimes it can be kind of weird seeing yourself or mm-hmm. like hearing yourself even, or maybe if you weren't going through the best time while you were filming that video. But I think like I'll film a lot of videos with my friends and it was like an actual good memory. I like want to watch back. Yeah. And so. Well, that's how you know it's a good ass video. Yeah. If you want to rewatch yourself, yeah. like live the moment you already yeah. lived mm-hmm. and edited, that means it's yeah. a great video. No, uh, like if you're editing the video, I feel like watching it through, like I'll watch it so many times times yeah. and then I'm like okay now it's perfect I'll be like watching I'm like mm, that needed a clicking sound it's like yeah. probably no one else would notice that but like watching it yourself I it's okay like... I do I notice <laughs> yeah I'm like the biggest critic but yeah no that's great that's okay cool. so something I want to dive into a little bit is I feel like with TikTok obviously mm-hmm. being what it is mm-hmm. it's a beast mm-hmm. of a platform mm-hmm. everyone's saying like oh YouTube and Instagram are dead yeah. right mm-hmm. but like for you it's so not mm-hmm. so what are your thoughts on that? Just yeah. statement in general, like YouTube's dead. Someone yeah. says that. What do you think? Um, I think that at the moment there is probably less people than there maybe was like 2016. But I think that there's still a huge community on there. And the people that are there are like diehard fans yeah. of, you know. And YouTube is such like a happy, good place. The comments are never bad. Yes. Everyone is supporting you. They are happy for you. They well, want to catch fans. up. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think TikTok is great. It has great reach. I think it's really great for opportunities especially as a creator but I always hear people say I don't even want to say it but like YouTube is where the money's at yeah it is you know I don't want to I I feel weird saying that because obviously 
Yeah. You shouldn't. But um, it's just a fact. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. And I think YouTube is where you can build a very genuine, like, audience that really cares about Mm -hmm. you. Whereas TikTok, it's very easy for someone to subscribe to you because they like the way you look. And then they don't actually get to know you personally. And so it's easy for them to forget about you. Yeah. And I don't want to, I, I see that in the nicest way possible. No, no, no. But it's just, again, it's a fact. It's uh, with TikTok, there's so many people. Mm-hmm. I know their face, but I don't know their name. Exactly. Because it just yeah. comes on my For yeah. You page. Yeah. So again, like good for brands, maybe good for like reach. Mm-hmm. But I think also if you want to take it further, using YouTube as a tool and really getting people to know your personality. Because also, like, I think things can get out of hand, even like on TikTok, you can get canceled really quickly and people don't even know who you are. Yes. Like, maybe, okay, first of all, you can grow an audience and maybe those people are genuinely not the best influence or role model. Yes. So they could get caught. So you don't know who you're really following here, but also things can get taken out of hand and maybe you get canceled for something you didn't actually do. And then it's like everyone's just jumping on top yeah. of each other and in they're the comments. Just, yeah. TikTok is ruthless. They want to hate you. They want to hop on the train and even if they don't know you. Yeah. Whereas I feel like on YouTube, they'd be like, well, no, she wouldn't do that. Or like, I don't know. They actually I th- know you. They know you. Yeah. I feel like they know the intentions that you have and it's hard to go a long way on YouTube if you don't have pure intentions. Mm. Whereas on TikTok, you can grow really quickly and you know you don't you don't know the creator really wow that's a great uh that is so true (laughs) and I feel like even in the influencer space I've heard a lot of people say like oh like if only like no names but like if they knew how they were in person they like the followers don't know yeah so 100% you know on YouTube people are genuine I would for someone I feel like I know a lot of TikTok creators Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be like I their fans will be like, oh, we want you to vlog on YouTube. Yeah. And then they do. Yeah. And they're like, but I don't get views. Yeah. Right. So what do you think like someone that has maybe like 10 or 20K, they're huge on TikTok mm-hmm. or maybe they're not. Maybe they just have 10K yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. What advice do you have for them to like truly grow a platform mm-hmm. on there? Um, I think that you have to know that it's going to take work. I think on TikTok, you can grow really quickly and you I, I feel bad saying because I feel like it's almost controversial, but it's like. TikTok is, at the end of the day, it was 15 seconds. It was dancing, and people may think that they're working hard, but when you're editing a video for 15 hours, yeah. it's a way different, like, work ethic, it I is. think. And so people get on YouTube, and they're like, oh, this is so hard, I can't grow. YouTube is, like, not the place where you're going to blow up overnight, but it's very rewarding. It is. So it's, like, long and steady grind. You can't really get into YouTube and, I think, be very successful at it if you don't have, like, love for it and passion for it and, like, I think think if you want to transfer over just know that it's going to take time it's going to take effort you have to be consistent you have to put in the work Mm -hmm. and you will get rewarded but like it's just not as easy as you may think yeah no I think you're absolutely right is there Mm -hmm. any like other random tip or trick you think Mm -hmm. you know people I feel I feel like I know so many people on YouTube that they're just they're having trouble getting Mm -hmm. out of a plateau Mm -hmm. like what would you say to them um looking at what's trending right now and getting out of your ego I'll say this Ooh. I think a lot of times you can get comfortable and being like they subscribe to me so they they know me I, they want to watch my vlogs but it's like you have to make videos for the people and sometimes we Ooh. forget that like what are we providing them and why did they subscribe to us for mm. so sometimes even I, I can do this myself and I'll be posting vlogs and I'll be like oh my god why don't people want to watch my travel vlog but the people want to see something that's going to be helpful to, to them. them so I think thinking about your viewers and what people want to see and are you actually providing them value I think that's really important wow so and seeing like what's relevant right now I think sometimes you can get stuck in your niche but then if you're looking on TikTok and using like what's trending on TikTok TikTok, but then bringing it to YouTube, a lot of people aren't necessarily doing that right now. Or you get too comfortable in your space, but you have to be constantly working towards like, where? how am I getting better? What am I going to do next? Yeah. Like, I, I think you just can't get too comfortable. You but. are such a smart cookie. You really are. I mean, mm-hmm. I've told you this a gazillion times, but what? how would you describe a Fernanda stand? Stand. <laughs> stand. I love like it. Like someone that's uh, a ride or die. Yeah. Like they are a Fernanda girly. Like a they Fernanda watch girly. everything. I think of Fernanda Gurley is a very <laughs> kind hearted person that is just like wanting to work on themselves. They want to be the best version of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that all my fans are just so genuine. I, they always have the nicest comments to me and like they'll tell me what they're working on or, you know, people that want to be very confident and want to like exude just good vibes, be a good place for other people to come to as well. And just like 
everyone's inspiring each other. I'll see. I, also, I have to add in here, very aesthetic girlies. Yeah. Because I love a good aesthetic. I think yes. I'm a Libra. I like things looking pretty. My mom's a Libra too, so she oh, grew really? me up on she like things need to look good. And yeah. it doesn't have to be, but I very find a lot of joy in it. Yeah. Just making things look very pretty. And so a lot of my fans, like they'll post their story like watching my videos and there's like a little like cup of it's matcha aesthetic. on the side. Yeah. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I love that. You're like repost. Yeah, this literally looks repost. Good. I can repost all of them. They have like yeah. cute phone cases or they're very just like everything is so pretty and I don't necessarily think that that's like fake or anything it's just like you have an eye for the aesthetic yeah and so I think people can recognize that when they watch my videos and it attracts people that <laughs> like that kind of vibe and I love it I love I it lo- I love it mm-hmm. um that makes complete sense to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. do you feel like they're like now that you've grown you've hit a million mm-hmm. which is like a million in my eyes is like 10 million on TikTok yeah yeah at least. Yeah, I don't it's kind of crazy Maybe it's because like 20 million. I feel like we've <laughs> no, literally we've almost like desensitized ourselves to like to what a, mil- a, million, oh, a is. million is. Like yeah. I'll be like like I don't even know. Like people on TikTok can be like like 67 million that you think 1 million is like not that it's much absurd. but it's absurd. Yeah. So I think we got to forget like okay. how many so people are you like a million congrats. That's huge. Thank you. Thank that, you. Especially on YouTube that's a huge thank accomplishment. You. Um what do you wish you would have known earlier before you hit a million? Um, in regards to your like career, mm-hmm. I'm I'm just very happy with how things turned out. That I'm like I almost wouldn't change anything, mm. but I would just like tell like I would keep affirming to myself, "You got this, girl!" Like keep going. Just uh-huh. I feel like maybe for someone else watching this, what they advice I would you give, know, them. give them give yeah, them yeah. would just be like believe in yourself. Like just be like give yourself a lot of affirmations and be like even if you don't believe it like I am going to become this person that I want to be or like have a very clear vision of yourself mm-hmm. and like don't let people tell you otherwise and like don't let people steer you in the wrong path like at the end of the day reel back and be like okay what are my true yeah. like values and like who do I want to be like what kind of influence do I want to have um and yeah I guess maybe I guess something I would have wanted to do sooner is like when my videos were like like I was first growing really quickly like maybe monetizing like like making merch kind of at that oh, time okay although I, I feel like I was just not even thinking that because I was just so yeah. happy to be making videos but now looking back maybe I could have made merch at that time mm-hmm. or like been a little more strategic yeah, in that area yeah. whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah okay. I would say also one more thing I think for someone else growing all your socials at the same time Ooh. that is something that I saw from someone else say and they were like don't forget about your Instagram don't forget about your TikTok when you're just focused on YouTube but you know, all three of them help each other. If you're, if I'm yeah. doing well on YouTube, my Instagram grows. If I'm doing well on TikTok, my YouTube grows. Constantly so like, plug. just remember <laughs> about all of them, or uh-huh. like give time to all of them. If you're, you know what I mean. Got it. Like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, just focus on one. Yeah, but I think if you can do all three, they all help each other, and they all have different benefits, in my opinion. So yeah, they do. Yeah. What would you say are the different benefits? Um, well, what, like what I said, one? for TikTok, I think like opportunities. I agree. We is, always talk about this. Yeah. Like I think especially now, like a lot of people are going like brand trips or, you know. They're, Crazy just brand experiences. Yeah. I feel like because the TikTok is like the rage for Gen mm-hmm. Z, mm-hmm. brands are like, we have to do something yeah. with TikTokers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I think regardless of Which like I get the, it. No, I mean, amazing. 100%. I would do that too. I, yeah. I, I would do that if I was a brand. Um, But I think regardless of money or anything, that's a lot of like life experiences that you get to have. And it's just like, I think the more experiences that you have, you kind of solidify your own idea of yourself as well. So Mm. then it's like, you know, you're kind of getting to know yourself. You're so wise beyond your years. It's it's beyond. How old are you? I'm 21. Yeah, it's crazy. Thank you. Um, Okay, sorry. Continue. I just have to tell you that. (laughs) No, but yeah, that's what I think on TikTok. Um, Also, you can meet a lot of people maybe in the same like niche as you, make a lot of friends. And then as for Instagram, I think Instagram's a little bit struggling right now. The algorithm is scaring me, but, um, you know, it's, I think you can do very interactive work with your community, like doing like polls, questions, like DMs. Like, I think that's the one where you can connect the most Yeah, and people will like continue to DM you or like ask you questions or comment. Mm-hmm. It feels very regulars. personal. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I feel like I know even like some fans, like I'm like DMing yeah. them. I'm like, Same. I know you guys. So yeah, I think that's like community mm-hmm. building. So I just today or yesterday Mm -hmm. I was like in a bad mood because Mm -hmm. I could post it on Instagram it just did not perform the way I thought it was going to Mm -hmm. so I for the first time ever I pulled an Alex Cooper and I went to my settings and turned (gasps) off all my likes on everything okay because I was just like I don't like that this is 
it's hindering my creativity yeah, yeah. and it's not making this fun mm -hmm. and I don't want it to make me not post and not be yeah. active. Yeah. So I'd rather just not see it. Like mm -hmm. ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She full blown like took her comments away and whatever. I didn't, I like actually, I didn't know that, but yeah I, yeah, I could totally see why even I've gone through phases, honestly, kind of right now, like when your like engagement is kind of like yes. changing so, and you're just so like, random. literally this wasn't the case a month ago. Yes. So that is a little bit crazy <laughs> it's scary yeah it is scary as a creator because yeah. that like i mean our livelihood is based off yeah. of analytics unfortunately yeah. like no, that's the reality it is and yeah. i it it is i feel like people can't relate to it because it's just like okay you're an influence like what like, the who heck cares? but it is very challenging when like your self-worth is kind of based on like how you're doing and it's numbers uh -huh. so it is very painful because i think even if you're in a regular job you don't see like things going red or things going up and like you do get that high when it goes up so it's like it does take a toll on your mental health. And I think at the end of the day, prioritize your mental health. If you need to take the comments off, you need to take the lights off, do it. Because mm -hmm. like, and, and I've noticed it even with other creators that I look up to that their follower count may be going down. And I feel like that gives me a little peace of mind that like, it's it not does. just me. Like everyone's kind of going through it. But it's also it. so frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I know. it is. But as they like get like older, like I'm not going to say any names, but some that I'm thinking about, they're still getting opportunities and they're still like people know who they are. So even if they're losing followers, they're like still doing well. They're still that bitch. Yeah. yeah. Like and people know them as like a staple. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, yeah. Yeah. So I think. No, absolutely. Just I, be, like it is painful, but just like trusting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I just. For me, it was more so hindering my creativity because yeah. yeah. I was like, then I was like, oh, then I'm not going to be creative in that way mm -hmm. because that doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like this all is rooted behind like whatever find I find to be interesting mm -hmm. is interesting to others. Yeah. So I need to like, I don't know. I felt like I needed to go reel it back in and mm -hmm. go back to my fundamentals. Like, when was this fun? Yeah. And like, exactly. when did I find it inspiring or when did I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like it's been a long time since I've really like been excited about Instagram and yeah. I just was like I, the likes thing is bothering me yeah so I'm just gonna like turn it off for a yeah. second and we'll see what happens mm -hmm. I, don't I think know. that's perfect no I think that will definitely help like with creativity and just creating from like what you actually yes want to do but yeah I think Instagram algorithm is crazy it's weird and it's weird that you can't I think YouTube is very helpful because it's like you can see what's like where what's things are yeah. going up and down <laughs> like, like thumbnails I've, bad yeah or whatever. like you, you got to fix something but like Instagram is a little bit stressful but I guess some like you can search up kind of like best practices for like Instagram I don't know if anyone if everyone would do that but I feel like I've definitely done that and it's like oh they're really pushing out reels maybe post more reels something I have noticed is my like followers and engagement is better when I'm posting a lot of reels <sighs> which I did a lot throughout the summer and then I stopped because I was like oh my god annoying and it's just like no I actually that was helpful yeah so it's just I, I wish I miss I not to be like a dinosaur but like I miss the yeah. that was photos and TikTok as videos yeah yeah and and like as a creator it's like so uh challenging at least for me to decide like what lives on reels yeah. versus TikTok because I don't like to repurpose exactly I don't want to yeah. put the same thing everywhere yeah which I know people are like you should do that mm -hmm. <laughs> no I know I totally can understand with that and I think it's even hard to be like okay what am I doing on what because everything mm -hmm. is like you're mm -hmm. supposed to do a little bit of every like now there's shorts where does so yes where it's does everything kinda, live? it is definitely overwhelming have you tapped into shorts I've posted a few but I don't think that I've done you know what I should be doing I should definitely post more put more effort into it but again it is hard to be consistent and post quality content on everything without being like huh take a step back yeah so it is a little bit tricky but you know, playing around with all of them. Again, you, there's so much information and like you can find out how to do things online. I feel like people, even myself, sometimes would like ask other people like, what are you doing right now? But it's like, you can also do the research yourself. Research, yeah. Yeah, and like search up like, what am I doing wrong? Looking at your analytics, being like, hey, when was I popping off the most? And then maybe replicating some of the stuff that you were doing at that time. So yeah, it, it can definitely get in your head though because sometimes I'll look back on myself and it's like, when was I doing the best? But it's like, uh, if you weren't a creator, there's, years where people are having bad years and it almost doesn't even give you the chance to have a bad month without you being like oh I'm in my flop era yeah like I, yeah. I think it's like not like I don't think it's possible for you to be happy 100% of the time and I think even when I first started growing I was like just growing so quickly I was so happy I don't think I cried for a year and then when things were like getting normal it wasn't even bad just like normal, normal. setting settling in I was like oh, what's happening like I'm not happy like I used to be but it's like you know, not everyone is supposed to be happy 100% of the time. Absolutely. And everything's so relative, like to where, because yeah. like you, like I can't compare my, my channel to you because that would be ridiculous, right? Like I, but you would look at 
so and so's channel and be mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm doing good compared to them, but you're yeah. you're comparing yourself from to someone that's probably way bigger than you. Yeah, you know, yeah. And everything's so relative. Like. Mm-hmm. 100k views to yeah. you might be small but yeah. really big to someone else yeah and that's why i feel like there's so many things to consider yeah a lot of factors this i don't even think this makes it necessarily better but i feel like what i do more is like compare myself to me but okay, then yeah. that can be painful because then you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself too yeah. so it's and like there's still a lot of factors yeah like, because sometimes like with this world like sometimes self-care was really popping mm-hmm. in july 2020 yeah. you're like why am i not doing self-care anymore even yeah. though it's like you know. And it's like that was also when everyone was home watching yeah, stuff. Exactly. I also think as a creator, which especially as my maybe niche being self care or like productivity, it's like you have to remember we're not a self improvement project, which I always see online. Yes. I have to remember that myself because it's like maybe an, another person that's working like a nine to five, they are not focused on their beauty routine 100% of the time. Yeah. Like it's just like actually just not yes. normal. So I feel like even with my content and I do a lot of stuff, I feel like people can take inspiration from it, but it's so hard to compare because like for some people, it's their job to look mm-hmm. a certain way or to Absolutely. act a certain way. And it's just like, it's it's not even normal. I'm like, what is normal? I don't yeah. Even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, eh, I, don't I know. love it. Well, y- you've done in my eyes a great job at staying grounded and really being in touch with your audience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I think is why your videos have performed so well just because Thank you're you. very very in, in tune with what they want mm-hmm. and also you're great at making a good ass video thank you so yeah thank um you. so uh, you've kind of got the YouTube thing in my eyes on lock mm-hmm. what are you doing right now to make moves in your life make would you say I think Going forward, I obviously want this to be a long term thing. So I this next year, I guess, want to focus more on like even getting into like traditional media and, you know, utilizing like, you know, how how can I just like try everything, honestly? And I think as a viewer, sometimes you can be like, why are they trying everything? But if you have the opportunity, I think you should try everything and see what you like and like what sticks. And I think in the past few years, I've been going to Fashion Week, for example. I would love to get more into the fashion space. I can so see that for you. Yeah, I think. That's super interesting. I mean, singing is not really my thing, but like if you were a singer, like getting into that or something, or like even acting, I feel like I would love to do some acting classes mm-hmm. or something and see if that's you should. something. I yeah. kind of want to too, but I've never done it. I know I've never done it, and everyone it's definitely, always says you should though. Yeah, exactly. So I think that would be super cool. Um, the podcast is something that's I'm very excited for, and like something new to kind of like you know find my way through that. Is this a solo pod? It is a solo pod. Wow. Do you have a name? I do. It's called A Better You by Fernanda <gasps> Ramirez. Oh, I love it. So obviously the whole, I guess, idea of it is going to be on like wellness and becoming the best version of yourself while also being realistic because I think sometimes people can look at me and be like, oh, she has her life together. But like, guys, half the time I'm like late to something. I forgot this. I can be very mi- like forgetful yeah. or whatever. And it's, I think, showing like you can be that girl, but you can also, you know, you're trying, oh, you're like having fun, you're young. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited about this podcast. I really want it to be, I have a lot of videos that are like your guide to, and then I have vlogs and stuff like that. And sometimes people can be like, oh, m-, like there's, they're asking for so many different things because I do a lot of different topics. And so I want the podcast to be more of like a guide. Like it's going to be, I, I like doing like research on my videos, like a little, some, some, yeah. so I'll have like a little guideline and like be giving guides kind of, oh, if I that love makes it. sense. So it's kind of like, uh, how my YouTube videos would be, but in like a talking format. You can probably tell I love to talk. Yeah, so I know I love it. <laughs> I'm really excited to just That's have gonna be a somewhere great where podcast. I, can, I feel yeah. like you know what? I feel like there's a lot of self improvement books and mm-hmm. podcasts mm-hmm. that a lot of men yeah are the hosts of yeah. So I think it'd be really cool to have a female perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, with you know like some you do your research which yeah. is which is really cool yeah so I think that's gonna be super fun I'm very excited and I think just like all the creative aspect of it as well like maybe start like the Instagram for it I have I have like so many ideas for it that I don't know if I like should like you know some things are like secret but yeah. I have a lot of things planned I feel like I'm a very like creative person so I'm like all these stuff is that's just very great. interesting to me but sometimes it can be like I'm like what do I do with all this like stuff so I just like have like notes like laptop like so many me random too. My things notes are like, everywhere. yeah but that is something I'm very looking forward to and of course probably starting my own brand like <gasps> it's just so many things so I'm like very excited I always tell my fans I guess fan sounds like a lot <laughs> but um to just like stay tuned because I think you know, especially as spring, I think I like defrost after like February. Oh, I'm sure. So especially I'm like being ready in to get into like the grind because yeah, yeah something about living in Canada. Yeah, I, the winter depression kind of hits a little bit. So you know, my followers, I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, but <laughs> now it's time. I'm like ready to go. So. Do you think you'll ever have guests on your podcast or solo? Yeah, I would love to have guests. I think I want to do like 
um, maybe like once a month or oh, something. That's a great idea. Yeah. So then it's a little bit of both. I did like a poll and I was asking like what they would want to see and they said like do a mix of both. So mm-hmm. I think that would be best case scenario. Are you thinking video or no video? I'm going to do video. Oh, yay. yeah. So then I can have it on YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, smart. And people can see it. And yeah. I love watching podcasts yeah. on YouTube, which exactly, by the way, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel here, definitely go subscribe. Yeah, go subscribe. Um, it's... I actually always watch your podcast Aww. on the video form. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I like the video form. I don't know why. It's like comforting to have on my house. Yeah, me too. Anyone's. Yeah, even when I watch like a YouTube video that's like talking, I just like having like yes. video and then I'll just like play it on the side and I'm like listening to it. But that's exactly yeah. how I am. So do you have any uh, specific goals for 2023? For 2023? Well, I guess it was like starting my podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I have like I get- I feel like I kind of mentioned these, but like some like business ventures. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of want to do all those things. But I feel like also a lot of like personal goals. I feel like um, 2020, 20, okay, when I first started my channel, it was very much the year of like grinding. I was grinding, putting in the work. I was staying home. And then like last year, I really traveled. And it was kind of like, I felt bad a little bit for being a little bit inconsistent, but I was living my life in real life and like kind of reaping the rewards of working so hard the year before. And so I got to travel a lot. And then this year, I'm like, okay, now it's time back to work. So I'm like, I want to start the podcast, get everything together. Um, I really want to go to Miami Swim Week this week (gasps) or this year. I would love to oh my try God. to like try out like yeah wait walk. what you totally should <laughs> yeah I really want to you need walk to be Miami walking so in week. shows and no I really want to and I was like you know if I have this as a goal even if I don't get it that's fine but I can really you know the fitness goals grind for like the two months or three months before really yeah. put a lot of like effort into the physical aspect of it and like you know trying to get really fit maybe working with a personal trainer like we're like really yeah. trying for it and if it doesn't work that's fine but i think it's something new and different so i'm i'm really excited for that and again like i was saying some like personal goals i just want to be a better friend better mm-hmm. like someone to look up to just a better daughter better sister just yeah working on being a better person i i love that how do you balance or speaking of that mm-hmm. how do you balance your personal life and just personal well-being and Mm -hmm. relationships because even though you're making videos like about yeah your well-being and you know leveling it up you're still that's like so different from how you're actually doing Mm -hmm. in my eyes Mm -hmm. so how do you balance all of that Mm -hmm. and like you know obviously it sounds like you have a great relationship with your parents or you know your Mm -hmm. sibling or whatever Mm -hmm. i'm like are you still dating yeah, I am. Okay. I have a boyfriend. Yeah, I'm like, how do you yeah. manage all of that? It definitely, it almost feels like a little bit long distance, even though it's not. But okay. I I think it helps that a lot of the people that are really close to me, I feel like I, I love making friends. I'll make friends with so many people, but my people that are close to me, it's like those are the people that I'm always seeing. Okay. And so I have like my group of best friends. There's like, those are the girls. I see them like every weekend. Uh-huh. And then I have my boyfriend and then I have my family. So I you know, try to give time to everybody. And I think they are also very understanding of what I do. And so they'll give me like space if they're like, you got to work, you got to work, like put that in the forefront. And I think it's very helpful that they knew me before I started everything. So they just like know how much effort I put into it. So they're very just like, do your thing. If you need time, like do your thing. Do your thing, 21. So I'm like, see my friends on the weekend, see my Mm -hmm. boyfriend during the week. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely can be challenging, especially since moving out. I live like an hour away from my friends and my family, my boyfriend. Yeah. So that's... it is a little bit hard. I feel like I spend I mean, a lot of time. I mean, it's a mini long distance. Yeah, exactly. So it can be a little challenging, but putting an in effort into those relationships. So, you know, I, I think that's like, if I didn't have like those like friends, family, I just, I feel I couldn't even do my job properly. I feel like I have to fill in my cup so I can fill other people's cup if yeah. that makes sense no you do yeah so you do i think also a lot of creators underestimate how like i need alone time to film yeah like yeah. i can't ha- you can't be hanging yeah no exactly i have to <laughs> people think that like oh your job's so like yeah. quick and easy like just get a photo yeah. i'm like no like i need time to like think yeah no exactly and especially and brainstorm yeah like, and like decide what clip i need next exactly i also think that I, I guess, like, something for me, I feel like being very authentic and very honest. Sometimes when you're t- around too many people, you can, like, getting all these, like, opinions or even if you're hanging out with new people and they don't match your vibe and they, like, drain you, how do you, like, go back and be like, hey, guys, I'm going to tell you guys how to be your best self. Like, I can't even yeah. give good advice. So I feel like spending time alone and honestly, like, 
watering my own plants yeah. is how I can be good on YouTube. Like literally, I'm like I can't be a like self help or whatever if I'm like not doing well. Yeah. So I think oh, that's 100%. very important. Do you have a schedule as far as like filming? Mm-hmm. I actually don't. I usually will plan kind of what my ideas are for like the month, and then like I'll plan my day the day before and then I'll be like okay "Okay, this is what I'm doing tomorrow you're gonna film tomorrow and then I'll usually film for like say it takes me a day or I do like three days and then I'll edit all like all that and I'll just like sit at my computer which Uh you know could have a better schedule because I will be editing for like 20 hours and then not for like four days and then it's you know it's not really the vibe but I guess if it works it works it works whatever works yeah so you'll film Okay, because I'm thinking of your videos and mm-hmm. they're so like you have so many clips mm-hmm. from Maya's like from different days yeah, and different yeah. moments. So will you film like whatever you let's say you filmed on Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Will you edit whatever you filmed on Tuesday and then be like, okay, I actually needed a clip to yeah. here, like to insert here and then go and film that? Usually I film all like I film all at the same time and then I edit all at the same time, but then if I am editing and I'm like, okay, this needs something more, I'll go film something else. Got it. But usually, wow, that surprises me because yeah. you. Have, I feel like you make it seem like it's like over so much yeah. time. Yeah, in something. Your I'm pretty sure actually from watching Alicia's videos, she would always say like, show it, don't say it. Yeah. And I would be like, you know, I'm taking that advice. So I'm like vlogging everything, even if it's like something really random. And I feel like maybe to someone else or like she's a YouTuber and I'm just like, <laughs> like filming the water bottle and they're probably just like, what is she even doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. once you edit it, you can make it like look like a story and just like make everything look good together. But yeah. Yeah, the more footage and clips that I have, I'm always like, thank God I yeah. found that. Yeah, oh, 100%. Uh, when I edit my videos, it'll be like four hours of footage and then I'll edit down to like 10 minutes and it's just like, takes a long time, uh-huh. but the video turns out great. Like when, usually when a video for me is like one hour long of footage, I'm like, oh, I didn't get enough. Like that's that's not, I did not grab it. Wow. So, yeah. Do just, you have any like storytelling or editing tips? Um, I think, okay, for storytelling, I like to use my hands, a lot of expression, uh-huh. uh, very like, you know, it's be fun. yourself. I feel like, I don't know, uh-huh. maybe people people do it, but I, I feel like it goes unnoticed. Like if you have like just like a joke you want to say or like a quirk you want to say or like just very being ex- express- expressive. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. expressive. It really goes a long way and people are interested and they're engaged in like what you're saying. Um, also for when you're talking, I just talk for so long and then I edit it to like be how I want it to be. So I think... Mm. Don't be scared if you're not saying something the way you want to say it because you can edit it out or you can put something from this part into like the beginning. And so you can kind of curate it yourself, which is why I was kind of like, okay, I'm kind of nervous for a podcast because when I edit, I can like curate exactly how I want it to be. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, you just talk forever. I think that that's what I do when I'm telling a story, Um, looking at the camera, obviously, and even adding little like sound effects or like text on the screen, make it just like. You're watching the video and you don't get bored. Watch your own videos. If you get bored, you need to fix something in there. Ooh, okay. So that's what I do. I, I like watch it over and over again until I'm like, there's nothing I could add. Like if, there, if the music is off, I'll like change it. And I think adding also, I get my music through thematic. I think that's how you say it. And oh. epidemic sound. Yeah, epidemic. Yeah. I did so that. So I use both of those and I have so many songs and like sometimes I'll get new songs t- for every video. Like I'll just like search and I think getting a song that like matches the vibe of yes. like what you're doing. Like sometimes I'll be watching someone's video and it's like a, like a calming clip, but then the music is really loud and fast and I'm just like, oh. So I feel like getting yeah. music that matches the vibe or even the vibe of the video that you're trying to like uh-huh. give off. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's interesting. I have heard of creators that use thematic yeah. but i use um epidemic and and music bed have you used Ooh, music bed? I yeah. okay music bed like low-key slaps okay uh, i will like take... it's better than epidemic in my okay, opinion okay. but it's like more of a pain to download but if yeah. you just get the like subscription mm-hmm. i recommend it okay so just one last like tip question for someone that's like you know in the middle of canada mm-hmm. they're watching your videos mm-hmm. They're dying to have the life you're living. Mm -hmm. Um, They're in school right now. It feels impossible. Like, what would you have to say to them? I would say to 100% try it. First of all, just give it a shot. Um, Just be show what you're working through. Show what you're like going through. Be very honest, especially on TikTok. I think talking videos are very like they're popping off right now. And at the point that you're at, you're actually very relatable to most people throughout the uh-huh. world. Like there's actually not many influencers that can relate to each other even. So mm-hmm. it's like if you're showing your authentic, genuine self or even what you're interested in, there's always going to be people that find your content that find it interesting. And I think if you feel, especially within yourself, that you can do something more or like you're like, I just know, like I could be good at it. 
that's telling you something. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't act on it, but it's like, it is telling you something and listen to that little voice in yeah your head. no 100% listen to that little voice believe that you can do it and even if you're like in a small town like if people judge you or they think like oh that's so embarrassing it's probably because they wish they could do it or mm. you know they're projecting their own feelings onto you and it's like you know just block all those Absolutely. people out don't hang out with those people be with people that build you up and yeah just be consistent I think it can be hard when you're like in school but I think if you devote time to it, like it will happen, especially oh. if you have intentions of like you, you think it's going to do well. Absolutely. Um, that's great advice. I was going to ask you one more thing. When you aren't in the mood mm -hmm. or you're feeling discouraged yeah. or you're not getting views, yeah. right? That's when I really want to know, like, what do you do? Because you keep saying believe in yourself, believe in yourself. But mm -hmm. what happens when you have a day where you're not, where you mm -hmm. don't believe in yourself? Yeah. What, like, what practices are you going to? Are you going back to the journal? Mm -hmm. Are you going back to the manifesting? Like, I want to know exactly where your head's yeah. at during I, those days. Yeah, I think that there's many times when I, especially like I said, in the winter, like, I'm just like, it's really hard for me to you know be like upbeat and like mm -hmm. you know and believe in myself sometimes if like things are going bad but I think you just need to push through it and be like why am I doing this at the end of the day I like doing this so I'm going to keep doing what I like and I think like again like working on yourself because that's what's going to make you feel better like I, I can't create content if I'm in a bad place so if I'm like okay let's do a little evaluation let's do a little you know, thinking what the heck is happening and then be like, I need some self-care. I need just think about what you need in that moment and like really prioritize your well-being mm -hmm. because like to me, I mean, not everybody is the same, but like if I'm eating healthy, if I'm working out, if I'm prioritizing good sleep, if I'm doing my skincare routine, I feel on top of the world and everything feels effortless. I feel like I'm in flow. Mm -hmm. Whereas like my room is messy. I haven't worked out. I've been eating junk food. I, I like can't even think straight. Everything feels like a mountain everything to climb. Feel, yeah, exactly. And I think when you are also like very grateful and just like, you know, practicing gratitude, listening to affirmations, listening to music that lifts you up. Like, it, again, it, it's easy for me to say when I have a good support system around me, but um. If you can't find maybe your support system in person and maybe online or even subscribing to people that like lift you up. Great idea. I, yeah, I like to listen to like a lot of I, honestly, most of the YouTube that I consume is like very spiritual. OK, <laughs> so, wait, like, I know. That's yeah, kind of random. Drop like the names. Yeah. Or so, what affirmations are you like? I think I told to? you this before, but one of yeah. my favorite YouTubers is Hitomi Mochizuki. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I don't know how you to say told her name. That. Her, I also like hindsight. I also follow a lot of people on TikTok that are like, about manifestation or about how uh -huh. you believe in yourself like I I just like to listen to that because I'm like you're right you know what you're right yeah. and so that inspires me and I'm like okay this isn't that deep like we're just we're fine like you know also a lot of self-help books or like spiritual books being grateful talking to my friends I feel like a lot of my friends share the same like morals and values as me so like if I'm like overthinking and spiraling mm -hmm. I'll like go to them and I feel like they very ground me and you know I feel like I'm like okay we can do this I mean so. you certainly <laughs> You impress me so much because I think everyone talks about practicing gratitude. Mm -hmm. You're dead ass practicing. Yeah. Like uh, people forget that that's the word practicing yeah. gratitude. Yeah. Like you don't just get it. Exactly. Randomly. No. Like you have to practice it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're putting in so much effort in this cool new like Gen Z way, like you're like, I'm following manifesting yeah. Yeah. TikTok pages or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. The f I think that's really cool and inspiring. Mm -hmm. Like you're inspiring me right now to like really... Put in the work to practice gratitude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's like you just have to. I feel like my parents always taught me just be very grateful for your health. Like that's the number one thing. If you don't have your health, you can't do anything. Mm. So if you're healthy and you're like great, you have to like use your body. Absolutely. Treat it like, you know, because that's the only thing you have. If you're like not doing good, you can't even do. And my parents always say that. And they're like, you know, you are your job. So if you are not doing well, you can't even do your job properly. Yeah. So at least for me, I'm like, I need to prioritize how I am because I can't even, I you can't do anything. I can't do it. anything. And also like you start to doubt yourself and then everything is just going to go down in yeah. flames. So it's like, as long as you're, you know, not a self-improvement project, but like constantly just be checking in with yourself. And mm -hmm. even if you fall off for a month, a week, just be like, okay, let's reel it back in. Yeah. Let's do better. Well, I love better, it. Well, Fernanda, it's been an absolute blast. I feel like this has felt like five minutes mm -hmm. that I've chatted mm -hmm. with you, but it's been an hour. Um, where can everyone follow you? Please pimp yourself out. Follow me on Fernanda Ramirez. Two A's in my last name. Fernanda Ramirez on YouTube. Podcast coming out. Can't wait. Yeah. So, yeah. Just keep in touch. She, I just have to guess her up. Her videos are 
so epic. I mean, she's absolutely slays the YouTube game. She goes the extra mile. The editing is insane. Her tips and tricks are actual practical things you can use in your real life. They're easy to apply, mm-hmm. which I think is why everyone loves her. And she's just so fun to watch. And she's so aesthetic and cute. So definitely go follow her um, and subscribe. And yeah, tell her I sent you. <laughs> Bring your friends to YouTube. We love you all so much. And mm-hmm. be sure to make someone stay this week. Yay. Peace. Love you guys. Mwah.